Serving Central Florida, this is 90.7 WMFE FM Orlando and 90.1 Cocoa Beach, the quality choice. Today on Morning Edition... That's the Vehicle Assembly Building. And... That's the shuttle. The shuttle Discovery and crew of seven will spend a week in space conducting medical experiments and studying the effect of near weightlessness on the growth of plant and animal life. the launch pad led by Commander Ron Graby, the seven astronaut team, and uh, they've been on their backs out there a couple of hours now, and I'm sure that they are anxious, as we all are, to uh, get the show on the road, uh, but... This is CNN's Daybreak, news to start your day with Molly McCoy and Patrick Greenlaw at the CNN Center in Atlanta. And good day to you, everyone. I'm joined by Ralph Wingy today. The Space Shuttle Discovery is scheduled for liftoff in less than an hour. The astronauts will be studying the effect of weightlessness on humans and a curious assortment of other organisms. CNN's John Holloman joins us now with an update. How's it going, John? Well, Molly, in, in every shuttle launch, you know, there's some glitches before it manages to take off. Anything this complicated is going to have problems like that. Uh, as you can see, down at uh, the Kennedy Space Center, the shuttle is on the pad. There's a little haze there. There's been some concern about weather this morning. And in fact, my colleague John Zarella, who is uh, live at the Kennedy Space Center, has just come back from a meeting with NASA officials about another problem that's cropped up just in the past few minutes. John, what can you tell us about this, uh, this latest glitch? John, well, it is, in fact, a weather anomaly, and what it boils down to is that after the Challenger and after some other accidents they had here with expendable rockets, uh, they were very concerned about lightning strikes here. There are field sensors, and they call it trigger lightning. In other words, the vehicle, as it ascends, can trigger lightning under some circumstances. So what they did was put a lot of field sensors around here to register uh, the potential for electrical charges in the atmosphere. Well, the field sensors are all reading out of whack this morning here and they believe that it is because of sea salt in the air and the ground fog that is still uh, around this particular area they don't believe there's any real electrical charges in the atmosphere but because of the tight rules that were installed following challenger they can't go until those readings are back to normal launch control at T minus nine minutes and holding. We have indeed extended our normal 10 minute hold at this point and we will uh, be holding here for an estimated another 15 minutes or so. Well, 
Nothing else goes wrong. They're lift off in four and a half minutes. You better get out of here. <laughs> Just under four minutes. Uh, two minutes, 30 seconds, Mark. Two minutes, uh, 60 seconds. We're going to go. We're going to make it. We should see some smoke soon. Seven. Ah ha ah! ah. <laughs> Jesus. Look at that yellow flame. Look at that thing go. Jeez. There's the sound. Eight miles down range already. I'm glad they got it off. Yeah. Discovery Houston, negative return. Negative return. Okay. Roger, negative return. Uh, return to the last side is no longer an option at this point. As Discovery continues downrange, downrange distance now 145 nautical miles. As propellant is consumed on this ascent, the vehicle grows lighter and its rate of acceleration increases. Discovery now traveling well over 5,000 miles per hour. They have reached orbital velocity. Uh, accelerate the vehicle into a circular orbit at 163 nautical miles. 